Welcome back to my video series about how to build a sub 250 gram, three inch freestyle drone for absolute beginners who have never built a drone before. This is a video series. So if this is the video you were looking for, then great. But if you just stumbled across this video, then feel free to watch it. But if it feels like you're coming in in the middle, that's why. There is a playlist linked in the video description below that has all the videos in this series. And if you're not sure what the heck's going on here, then you should go back to video number one and. Hopefully it'll all make sense. A whole bunch of the content in the video that you're about to watch is borrowed from my previous build series where I built a five inch drone. I just couldn't bear to re-record hours and hours of content that was gonna be exactly the same, except instead of me holding a five inch drone in my hand, I'd be holding a three inch drone. I'm going back through these videos and anytime there is t a content that is unique to the three inch drone that you're building right now, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna record that and I'm gonna edit it in. But if there's a whole bunch of this video where I'm talking and I'm holding a five inch drone instead of a three inch, don't let it confuse you, it still applies to what you're doing. At this point, we are nearly done with this build. We just got a few more little things to do with the flight controller before we take it back to the bench. And then there's a few more little things we're gonna do over there. And then we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna freaking fly it. But before we do, there are a few little odds and ends to set up on the flight controller. And that's gonna be what we do in this video. And the first thing we need to do is take care of this freaking warning message that's been popping up the whole freaking time we've been working with the quadcopter. The accelerometer is enabled, but it is not calibrated. All right, fine. What we're gonna do is go to the setup tab and you want your quadcopter laying flat on the desk. Um, mine is not quite flat on the desk because my mouse uh, pad is in the way. So let's just lift that up and we're gonna lay it flat, flat on the desk. And we're gonna hit calibrate accelerometer. That's gonna be important if you are using angle mode because the accelerometer is the sensor that is used to tell the quadcopter when it is flat and level versus when it's upside down. Calibrating the accelerometer will not give you a perfectly flat hover every time because there's always real world circumstances that make the quad drift just a little bit, but you want it to be calibrated pretty close to correct just as a good starting point. Next up, uh, we are going to enable the RX lost and RX set options under D-Shot beacon configuration. And what that is gonna do, that's how we tell the flight controller that we wanna beep the motors when we activate the beeper mode that we created back in the aux modes. In fact, let me demonstrate that for you. I will need to have a battery plugged in because the motors require a battery to do their thing. Now that that's done, if I push this button, there you go. That's what it's gonna sound like when you activate the beeper mode. Here under arming, maximum arm angle. What this does is it prevents the quadcopter from arming if it is more than that number of degrees away from horizontal. And the idea is that if you're holding the quadcopter in your hand, then it probably won't be flat and level. It'll probably be tilted and that'll prevent it from arming. I like to disable this because it is annoying when you're like on a hill or you've put the quadcopter down and like slightly it's on a rock and it's not flat and level and it won't let you arm. You can disable this by changing that to 180 and save and reboot. Just be careful not to flip the arm switch while you're holding the quadcopter in your hands. In fact, I'll show you another trick, a little free tip here. When you land and disarm the quad, after you disarm the quad, raise the throttle. The quadcopter will not arm when the throttle's raised. You can use that as kind of like a safety. Before you fly, lower the throttle, Arm the quad. Oh, look at that. It armed. I was kind of surprised that happened. How did it arm? Why was it? No, oh, won't do it now. It's because I disconnected and power cycled. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, raise the throttle, flip the arm switch, it won't arm. The next thing I want you to do is go to the presets tab and we're going to load a couple of presets in. And the first preset I want to suggest you load in is the heads up racing rates. Uh, some people are going to see that and are going to think racing. I'm, uh, racing, is that too much for me? Uh, this is my first quadcopter. These rates are actually very forgiving and very precise. And so I think they're very good for beginners. And I think that's a better rate curve to use than the rates that come as the Betaflight default. I'm going to suggest you choose the heads up racing rates and pick and save and reboot. And the other thing we need to do is select the appropriate RC link profile for the Express LRS packet rate that we're using. Here's what I mean by that. Go to your radio and go into the Express LRS script and look at the packet rate here. And you can see my packet rate is set to 250 Hertz. The idea with the packet rate is that higher packet rates give you lower latency, 
but shorter range. What I'm going to suggest, uh, if this is like your first build, I'm going to suggest that you lower that packet rate down to 50 hertz, the lowest one, which will give you the maximum possible range, and I think that's more important for a beginner. Whatever packet rate you end up using, like I'm going to use 250 hertz because that's because that's what I like to use. Go ahead and choose the RC Link category, and then find the Express LRS preset for that RC for that packet rate. So in your case, if you're choosing 50 hertz, you would click the 50 hertz option. For me, I'm going to choose 250 hertz, and then under Fine Tuning, I want you to choose Freestyle, and that's it. And save and reboot. That's, I think that's it. I think our flight controller is fully configured. I can't think of anything else like essential that you guys need to know. I think it's time to take it back to the bench and finish assembling it and then freaking take it outside and fly it. I'm so excited. Well, I'll see you there. There's a playlist in the video description down below uh, where you can find all the videos in this series. As well, a card is going to appear on screen with the playlist link in it. If you can see uh, cards, I will see you in the next video.